kept his life but lost his Wagner group uh, and he should be very careful around open windows in his new surroundings uh, in Belarus where he's going. That was former CIA director David Petraeus with an ominous warning for Yevgeny Prigozhin following his attempted revolt against Vladimir Putin. This morning, Prigozhin's whereabouts still unknown, though the Kremlin says he will be exiled to Belarus. And all eyes now are on the Kremlin and Vladimir Putin. And what he does next, the world is asking, is Putin's iron grip on power slipping? We are joined this morning by former Trump national security advisor and former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton. Ambassador Bolton, we're so happy to have your perspective this morning. And let's begin there. Is this the beginning of the end for Vladimir Putin? Well, I think that is a possibility. But I have to say, uh, I think all of us have to avoid strenuously uh, drawing overbroad conclusions from insufficient data. And right now, we have radically insufficient information about a whole host of things, starting with the coup and attempted coup and what happened to it and, and what the future holds. I, I have my own doubts about uh, how serious this coup effort was uh, and what kind of threat it actually posed to Putin. And I have my doubts. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, it clearly amounts to a weakening of Putin's position, but whether it's fatal, as some people seem to think, I have my doubts about that. We just don't know enough. And I think that's one very good reason why uh, the White House has done very little here. And that's a, that's a position they should hold to. You think the Biden White House has handled this well, it sounds like? I think they've done nothing, which I think is the right thing to do. Okay. Because there are some Republicans who've been calling for them to do a lot, a lot more. Will Hurd among them. Let me ask you this, because you told our Jake Tapper in an interview, uh, none of us will ever forget last year, you admitted to planning coups before. You, and so you have a unique perspective on this, Ambassador. Why do you think Prigozhin turned around? Well, I think that's a question that uh, we, we don't know the answer to. The Daily Telegraph in London reports that uh, the Kremlin threatened his family, uh, and, and that was enough. Uh, I think it was because the effort uh, that he had launched was doomed. And, you know, people talk about how he got within 125 miles of Mos Moscow with how many Wagner Group troops, an infantry division or squad or something in between. And by the way, how much ammunition did they have? Uh, people say there wasn't uh, really a response by the Russian military. We have reports, at least, of conflict around Varanej, where the Wagner Group itself took credit for downing several Russian helicopters and a, and a reconnaissance uh, uh, a command, air, aerial command post, which indicates there was some fighting. Th this struck me as a desperation effort by Prigozhin to, to somehow keep the Wagner Group in operation. And I don't see it as a populist threat to Putin. I don't see it as cracking the aura of Putin's invincibility. Give the Russian people a little bit of credit. Mm -hmm. This war against Ukraine has been going on for 16 months. Mm -hmm. You think they think that Putin is infallible? I, I don't think so. Earlier this month, you told the Kyiv Post that Putin's political position, yes, had deteriorated since the invasion. But at that time, you told them that you didn't think his regime was actually threatened. Has your position on that changed, given the events of the weekend? Well, as I say, un undeniably, his position has weakened. But you have to ask, who else is going to threaten it? The Wagner Group is a sport. Uh, it was created to give deniability to Russian military operations overseas. The only reason Wagner Group forces are back in Ukraine uh, is that is that regular Russian military forces have performed so poorly. It's not like there are other warlords out mm -hmm. there. And let me be clear, Prigozhin is not a warlord. He's a mafioso and, uh, and, and a terrorist to boot. So, so this seems to me to be a mm -hmm. kind of one-off. Uh, if there's a loose screw in this mix, it, it's Prigozhin. It's not Putin. Okay. So on that point about why Prigozhin made the decision or the deal that he allegedly has made with the Kremlin to go in exile in Belarus, Senator Marco Rubio, the top Republican on, on the Senate Intelligence Committee, tweeted essentially that that would have to be because the two top military officials in Russia would be ousted, that that would have had to be part of the deal for Prigozhin to agree to that. Do you think so? It is a possibility. It doesn't look like it. There have been reports, underline the word reports this morning, of pictures of Shoigu out with the troops. We don't know whether those pictures were taken before the events of the weekend or mm -hmm. after. I think we need to see 
uh, Putin in person. We need to see uh, Gerasimov. We need to see Shoigu in person. But don't don't underestimate uh, the the possibility Putin can turn this to his advantage. You know, mm. it's part of the authoritarian leader playbook that when you face domestic crisis or instability, you divert the people's attention uh, by pointing to an external mm. crisis. And they've got one that's yeah. ongoing as we speak in Ukraine. I think that's how he points to Prigozhin as a traitor and rallies the people behind the boys in the trenches facing the Ukrainian spring offensive, which, according, again, to reports, uh, within the past few hours, Ukrainian troops have crossed to the uh, western bank of the Dnieper River around Kherson. Not clear whether it's a probe uh, or a more serious operation. Not clear whether it was planned before Please join this the conversation. Or not. But that's Put your the kind comments of thing and suggestions the, below the, the in the comments section. Now, Thank you for, for subscribing to this Russia, news channel. Is not you will be notified of any breaking to. news and new posts as you become part and parcel of the McCAD and TV the family. And what Please this like means. and share McCAD TV. We love you all. Please support McCAD TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.